I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you're at in your life, but remember, life is about living. It's about challenges, right? It's about having some pain, things not always going the way that you plan. But remember, while you can't control what happens, you can always control how you react. Welcome to Life of a CISO. I'm Dr. Eric Cole, your host, and we'll be taking you on a journey each week on what it takes to be a CISO and what are solutions that you can implement today if you are currently a Chief Information Security Officer or if you want to be one in the future. This is Life of a CISO. Welcome, 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 welcome. I hope you know what time it is. Woo, woo, woo. It's time. It's time, my friends. It's time to change. It's time to grow. It's time to be the best version of you. It's time for Life of a CISO with yours truly, the doctor, the doctor of computer science, the doctor of cybersecurity is in the house. And I just want to tell you, you're awesome. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you're at in your life, but remember, life is about living. It's about challenges, right? It's about having some pain, things not always going the way that you plan. But remember, while you can't control what happens, you can always control how you react to what happens. And you can always control what you're focused on and ultimately what you're creating. So let's just go and jump right into it. First and foremost, I just want to check in. I know most high-performing cybersecurity professionals, chief information security officers, managers, directors, wherever you're at in your career, we tend to be very hyper-focused, not always that social, right? But very introvert, very focused on what we're doing, where we're going, and yes, like to have relationships, but we're also very comfortable by ourselves. But that means we don't always get that social interaction. So I just want to do a fun little exercise. You and me, we just met up, grabbing a drink, grabbing a coffee, grabbing a salsa, whatever you like to do. We're just chatting, just connecting. And just I ask you, a very sincere question. I look you in the eyes and just ask you a really sincere question. How are you doing? How are you really doing? And granted, it's all areas of your life, but since this is more focused on professional, just where are you at? How are you doing with your career? How are you doing with your current job? How are you doing with progressing towards your targets, towards where you want to be in one month, three months, six months, or 12 months. And my friends, this isn't the time for the affirmations or the motivational mumbo jumbo. I know, I know words are important and what we say outwardly and we say to other people are critical and we do wanna confess who we really are, not where we currently are at. But this is not that conversation. This is honest. If you're just open and honest, putting the goals, putting the affirmations, putting everything aside, just connecting with somebody who cares about you, somebody who sees you, somebody who loves you, somebody who knows that you really matter and are and will continue to make a difference in the world, but I just really want to know, how are you doing? It's okay. It's okay if you're going through a rough period. I'll tell you, this is sort of an interesting time for me to do a podcast because the last few weeks for me, I've been a little down. I've been a little sad. And, and the thing is, you just got to recognize and address it. Just realize that, okay, that, that, that there's some things that I'm just a little down about. I wasn't even sure why. Because like things were working out well. Like lo looking at it externally, I'm like, hmm, 
things seem to be on track. Right? I'm, I'm doing good here, I'm doing good there, but, but just for some reason, just had those feelings. And it's okay, just a little down, a little bit of in, in that rut, a little sad, and, and just sort of processing it and just letting it be. And, and I found, and the reason I'm doing this exercise with you, the most helpful thing is when a friend finally sat down with me because he noticed I was a little off. I was just like, dude, just tell me what's going on. How are you? And I just shared it. And it's funny, just being able to share it with somebody, even if it's virtual, even if it's just with this video, just allowed that release to happen and just realized, okay, it's okay to feel that way. And he just supported me. He didn't judge me. I'm just telling you it's okay and just be curious. Be curious about those feelings. Sometimes your career is going to be on fire. Other times, maybe a little down, a little sad. I don't know where you're at now, but the reality is it's perfectly okay. What's not okay is not to share, not to be open, not to let it out. And I'll tell you, just this happened Wednesday, just sharing and releasing and letting it go as opposed to just burying it, which we often do as technical folks, we often are told, you know, I mean, we, we can't have feelings, we can't have emotions, just bury it deep inside. But I'm telling you, I give you permission and I gave myself permission just to feel, just to be open, just to be honest with them of what I was going through. I didn't know why, but just sort of telling me a little sad, a little down here, this and that. And I'll tell you, since then, it's been like this release. And then today I just woke up and just on fire. Right? And it just, I mean, now you might take a couple days, it might take a week, but the reality is we have to be able to give ourselves permission to feel. We have to give ourselves permission to just be curious about those emotions. We just have to give ourselves permission to live. It's okay if you're a little sad. It's okay if you're happy. You need all those feelings. And that's, to me, what I've really started to appreciate working with so many high-powered, brilliant technical folks is that when they're going between that transition from security engineer to a chief information security officer, from that technical to that strategic, or even folks I'm working with a lot now that are what I sort of call mid-level CISOs. So they're a CISO at a small to medium company and they want to move up to that larger Fortune 100, multi-billion dollar, that there's that yin and yang. You need both that happiness and that joy, balance with some of the pain and the growth, and you need the excitement, but you also need the sadness because they help you balance, they help you appreciate, and they help you give perspective for what you're going through and where you're at. And just wanna share sort of a quick story that comes to mind. So there was this individual, and if you heard it, just stick with me because it's still good to remember. It's something I sometimes forget about because we want life sometimes to always be perfect and go the exact way we want. But the reality is that wouldn't really make us happy. So there's this individual. He wasn't the best person in the world. He was always a gambler, swindling, trying to take advantage of people, always looking for ways to manipulate and get one up on somebody to make a quick buck, to, to make some money at the expense of somebody else. So just not a really good person. And he dies. And he wakes up after he passes away and he's in the penthouse suite at the Wynn in Las Vegas. So, so if you're a, a gambler or better, you know the Wynn is one of the nicest hotels on the planet. And the penthouse suite, I mean, just beautiful. Multiple rooms, multiple views of Vegas. It has one view is the Vegas, the other is inside the Wynn, which is also just as beautiful. Multiple, I mean, just top notch. And then he goes over to the closet in the finest clothes, the finest suits, all tailored just for him. He looks down at the counter and diamond ring and high-end jewelry and 
high-end watches. I was going to say uh, a brand. I don't even know watches, but I know some are like 100 or 200 cases. Just ridiculous amount of jewelry. And he just gets dressed with the finest jewelry and he goes out to the elevator and he's greeted like he is a king. Everybody is just nice to him. Uh, everyone's just treating him like the best friend. He just goes out on the floor and he's like a celebrity. He goes and he starts hitting some of the tables. Everywhere he goes, he just wins and wins. And he doesn't even need to win because I forgot to tell you in that room is just tons of money. Everywhere he opens drawers, there's just money beyond money. No needs or want. I mean, he just has anything he could want, he could buy. Sort of sky's the limit. He goes into the wind and there's a Ferrari shop. He walks in there and they're like, oh, sir, we already have a prepaid Ferrari in your name. Just pick whichever one you want. It's your, I mean, just everything is his. Everything is just working out the way he wants. And he just sort of has the most amazing day possible. Goes back to the room, just go, wow, this is amazing. And goes to sleep. And then tomorrow, the same exact thing. Everything perfect, everything working out. He's winning, winning. Anything he wants, anything desires is his. And once again, goes back to sleep. And this repeats day after day after day after day. And finally, after about 25 days, he's losing his mind. He's going, he's like, this is not how life is supposed to be. Nobody wins this much. Nobody has this much money without working towards it. No, nobody is just given everything without having to work or try. This is just not reality. There must be some huge mistake. I wasn't the best person. I shouldn't be here. So he finds the head angel. And he goes up to the head angel and goes, listen, this was okay for a few days. But I can't continue to live this way. There must be some mistake. I wasn't a good person. I shouldn't be in heaven. This isn't where I'm supposed to be. And the angel looks him in the eye and said, sir, who said you're in heaven? Just think about that. Would it that the first day or two would be great, but if everything worked out, everything happened, everything was given to you without you trying, without you putting in energy and effort over and over, isn't that really hell? Is that really, like, is that really what we truly want? Don't we enjoy working hard? I don't know about you, but I love a really good work. I just came from the gym Gave myself a super deluxe treat, which was, and I know this sounds crazy to some people, unlimited workout. Like during the week, I have meetings and calls when I travel, so I usually have to keep it to about a 60, 90 minute workout. So I go all in hit, but usually there's, oh, I wish I could do one more, shot, but I got that call. And a lot of times I'll push it and then actually like walking out of the gym, taking the call before I get back to my hotel. But it's always like, I wish I just had a little more time. So to me, the greatest treat I give myself is, bro, all in. Do that extra set, do the extra rep, do that. And I just, unlimited workout, just push myself where I got done. I'm like, yeah, all in, we're good. Rock and roll, baby, no regrets. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't just a simple gift and I have the muscles. What I love about physique and working out, and the reason why I emphasize it as a core foundational item for you as security engineers or chief information security officers, if you really think about it, when it comes to your body, sleep, nutrition, overall health, and exercise. It is one thing that you are in total control of. You ultimately get to decide when you go to bed. You ultimately decide when you wake up. You, you decide what food you put in. I don't know anybody that's forcing food down your throat. Nobody's forcing you to eat what you eat. Same thing with exercise. It's all decisions. It's all decisions that you make. And therefore, 
If you can get that dialed in, where you're keeping the promises to yourself, where you say you're going to get up at five and you do, and you say you're going to eat healthy that day and you do, and you say you're going to drink 100 ounces of water and you do, you keep those promises to yourself, you do what you say you're going to do to you, not to anyone else, but to you. That's, my friends, when you start building confidence. That's when you start remembering who you are. And that is when your career, your relationships, and all areas of your life take off. Because the reality is, if you can't keep promises to yourself, you're not going to be able to keep promises to others. And if you know that you don't keep promises to yourself, and this could be subconsciously, my friends, most people aren't even aware they're doing this. But if you can't even keep the promises to yourself and you're going into a meeting, how confident are you really going to be? How much ownership are you really going to have and how much are you going to really show up and be present when you know, and I'm just being from position of love, so just work with me here. I love you. I care about you, you matter, remember that. But how are you really going to show up as a world-class CISO when you know that you're a liar? And this was a hard thing for me. I'll just, I'll just share this with you and be honest with you. But that is part of why I was a little bit in a rut. About three weeks ago, I hired a new trainer. Nobody knows this, by the way, so I'm just sharing, being vulnerable with you, letting you know that, hey, it matters, and I'm not perfect either. But I hired a new trainer, and we get on our first call, and he's like, okay, Eric, I'm giving you a week to get your shit in order, to start eating healthy, doing these practices, getting cutting out carbs, e eating proteins, getting your water content, getting things where they need to be, and we're basically doing a super healthy uh, diet uh, where we're going to focus really on the keto diet, but healthy. Healthy and do it correctly, the ketones, because that's the best way to operate. And he goes, and then in a week, you're doing a 60-hour fast. So basically, you stop eating on Sunday, so Monday evening's 24, Tuesday is 48, and then th Thursday evening is essentially at around the 70 mark. And then you can either uh, eat that evening or if you want to push it right to the 80 mark, which is sort of the max you want to fast, you can do it next morning. So, so basically, we're going three days without food. And super achiever, me going all in, I'm like, dude, I'm starting it on Wednesday. Screw this week. I, I don't need the week. I'm, I'm a superman. I'm going to do it Wednesday. 24 hours and I broke. Got to the first night and I'm like, you got this, bro. You got this, bro. You got this, bro. And the next thing I know, I'm eating. I'm like, what the fuck? Couldn't even make it. So was honest with him. So when I say no one knows this, my trainer knows this and you know this, but I haven't shared it with anyone else. So I, so I couldn't even do it. So then I broke it. I'm like, okay, dude, you're right. I should have gave it a week. I shouldn't, I should have trusted you. It takes a week, so I do it again. So then Sunday, go in. Now I make it 48. 48 hours, bro. More than halfway through. One night to go, man. This, I got this, right? I got this. And I broke. I don't know why. I'm, I, I had to peel back. The layers are just, I didn't have the conviction. I didn't have the importance. But the reality is that really put me in a rut. That really put me in a bad spot because I'm like, how can I operate at a high level? How can I coach other people when I can't even go without freaking food? And by the way, in this diet, you're still taking the ketones you're still taking electrolytes, so, so your body is okay. 
And I was actually feeling really good. That, that's the reality of it. I felt great. I just don't know why I just couldn't do it. And I broke again, twice. So I'm like, fuck. I mean, if I can't even go three days without freaking food, if I can't even honor that commitment to myself, how am I going to play big? How am I gonna share the message with other people? And it really put me in a rut that I couldn't, I was a liar. I told myself I could do it. I told myself I could go three days, not a big deal, three freaking days, and I failed twice. Total belly flop. And then I finally said, F it. And you'll, you'll hear in the next one, but I'm now resetting for a third freaking time, and there is no option here. I'm more than halfway through at this point, and it's game. It is not negotiable anymore. I owe it to myself. My word and my commitment is more important than anything else. At this point, I would go in, and it won't come to this, but I would hurt myself before I put food in my mouth for the next two days because it is about me proving that I keep my word. It is about me gaining confidence that I am who I am and will keep my word to myself. But the reality is, that's where it all starts. So when we go back to how are you doing, how are you doing honoring your own commitment? To me, it was a fast. To you, it might be praying, it might be going on a date night with your significant other. It might be reaching out to a family member. It might be exercise. It might be doing social media. It could, it could be anything, but the reality is, if you want to be world-class, if you want to be a world-class chief information security officer, you got to keep your word to yourself. Because if you don't keep your word to yourself, how in the world are you going to keep your word to anybody else? So just this week, what are four things that you can do to start building your confidence to keep your word to yourself? What is one thing with your body? What is one thing with your mindset? What is one thing with relationships? And is one thing with business? You know, those are sort of how I break down the categories of life. There, you, people do more complex ones. I just sort of keep it pretty simple there. What is one thing that you can do for the next 24 hours that keeps your word for yourself? Then, after you did it one day, just 24 hours, you can do anything for a day. Then, what if we do it two days? Hmm. About three. Maybe, maybe if it's a fast, that, that three or four is good enough. If it's something that's a habit like going to the gym, maybe we do that seven. If it's journaling, maybe we do that one seven. Right? If it's date night, maybe it's just once a week. But the reality is you got to start figuring out what you really want and are you willing to do what it takes. Because I find th this in coaching, I know I'm expanding outside of CISO, but they all relate, they all go together. When I sit with my clients, there's two fundamental problems. First, they don't know what they really want. And a lot of times, and this is where I gotta be careful as a coach, what I really want for them is not what they really want. So I'll just be honest with you. If we go back to the fasting, Reason why I failed, reason why I fucked up twice is because I never took ownership of it. It wasn't what I really wanted. It was what my coach wanted. And how screwed up is this that my coach cared more about my health than I did because I had some issues with some of my guts and others. And the reason he put me on the fast was it, it cleans out your system. It actually lets your body sort of get rid of a lot of waste, clean out and reset. It's actually a very healthy thing. And I'll tell you the craziest thing, you feel great. You realize just how much shitty food you're putting in your system and the impact it has on you. Second day of the fast, wasn't tired, 
renewed energy, didn't need a nap, really focused, really clear. But my coach wanted it more than me. I got scared. My body was like, my mind was like, holy crap, this is all new. Don't know what to do. This is weird. This is strange. Crap, let's go back to what we know. And I ate. My body went back to what was safe, what it knew, not what was best for me, but your body, if it doesn't have total ownership and you're not all in on what you want, if it's what somebody else wants for you, you're going to get scared. And here's the difference. You're always going to get scared, but when you have total ownership, when you are totally clear right now, I am so clear on where I'm going to be when I break that fast. I, I know the feeling, the excitement when I wake up that morning, it's going to be fist pump. I have the perfect egg and steak omelet, the Swiss cheese right, that, fits with, that I'm going to have as breakfast when I get to the 80 hours that night. Right? Great. I'm going to be in San Francisco. Uh, a chorus, great Japanese fusion. The, the steak I'm going to eat is a reward, but I have total ownership. So now when I get scared, I'm like, no way. This is too exciting to me. This is too powerful. This is a huge milestone. I am all in. And now I know it's going to happen because I finally had total ownership. The first two times I was doing what somebody else wanted. And if you're doing what somebody else wants, you're never going to be all in. And when you get scared and fear comes in, you're going to fall back. You're going to slip. You're going to do what some people call self-sabotage. Here's the reality. Self-sabotage is bullshit. Reason why it's bullshit is this. Do you really think there's a part of you that wants to hurt you? Because sabotage means somebody is doing something malicious with ill intentions. If somebody's sabotaging your business, they're doing something to try to hurt you with ill intentions. So just play out those words. Self sabotage. It means there's parts of you that want to maliciously hurt you and do damage. And that's crap because your body is one of the most perfect mechanisms on the planet. But here's the reality. It's built for survival. And if there's a part of you, like I had to go in and look at that part of me that had me eat, it wasn't self-sabotage. It was that based on its limited knowledge, it was like you've always had food, you've always needed food, and if you go another day or two, I don't know how this is going to turn out, and because you don't have total conviction, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to do what I know keeps you alive. Not healthy, not optimal, not world-class, but there's a part of me that's keeping me alive, and it says, I'm going to give you food just to be safe. I don't know how this is going to turn out. So because I care about you so much and I just care about surviving, I'm going to have you eat food just to be safe. Even though I felt like shit, I was pissed off, that part of me was doing what it knew. So I had to go in and basically get total conviction. When you get total conviction, then all parts of you are like, okay, we're all in. This is what we're doing. It's research. It's sound. Here's the benefit. We are moving way beyond survival, and we are moving to thriving. And I finally had to say, am I willing to do what it takes? Is my overall health, is me going to the next level of fitness and not staying where I've been for a year or two, and I'm ready to grow, I'm ready to expand, but I need to reset. I need to reset my body. I need to reset burning carbs, which is very inefficient, to burning fat, which is highly efficient and much better for energy, focus, and brain. Now, reason, and once again, I'm not pushing anything here, not a medical doctor, so always do your own research, check with your doctors. But the reason why a lot of these different diets get bad rap is because they miss the key points. A keto diet, in my opinion, once again, only my opinion, check research, do your, your own uh, consultation with your doctors, if you can get your body to burn fat instead of carbs, it's much more optimal. It's better for health, better for brain. The problem is people do keto and they think you can eat bacon and butter, right? And, you, and 
Technically, you'll be in ketos, but it'll be what they call dirty ketos. So if you want clean keto, it's actually a clean way, but it's a new method, a new elevation. So once again, just so you know, before I do every podcast, I sort of pick a topic, and that's what you saw in the title, but I always sort of pray and connect with God and infinite intelligence on what do people really need to hear, and then I just let myself go. So this was a little different than what I anticipated. I hope it reaches somebody, but as I start to wrap up, I can't believe our 30 minutes are up, but as I start to wrap up, the question is, what do you, what do you really want in your career? Do you really want to be a CISO? What does somebody else want you to be? Do you really want to be a CISO or do you think that's the only way you'll get recognition? Is that the only way you think you can grow or expand? Because the reality is, if you're doing something that other people want or what other people are doing, or, oh, they have it, so I want it, you're going to struggle because you're not going to do what it takes. But if you really want to be a CISO, then you are going to do what it takes. And if you're struggling, give me a call. Send me an email. Uh, go, go to our link. Fill out the form. I'd love to work with you and help you because the reality is folks that really want to be a CISO, sometimes it's just little tweaks I need to make. And I'll be honest with you. About 20% of the people that hire me to be their coach, and usually they do a six or 12 month commitment, about 20% of them, I actually fire them after two sessions. Why? Because what I realize is I'm not about taking your money. I'm about fulfilling a mission. And 20% of you, what I realize is deep down inside, you really want to be a security engineer. You really love being a security engineer and you want to be a world-class security engineer. But somewhere along the way, somebody told you that you couldn't. Somebody convinced you that the only way to grow, the only way to expand was to be a CISO. So you're doing it because of what other people said or what other people want. I know in one case, they're like, Eric, I finally got them to break open and they told me, Eric, I really love being a security engineer, but my parents want me to be a chief officer. They paid for me to go to business school. I have a business degree. I love security, but they want me to have the title C blank blank O. They want me to be a chief officer, even an operation officer, a CISO, or some other one. So I thought CISO would be the closest that I can still do what I want and make them happy. Let me help you out, my friends. You're an adult. You can love your parents and care your parents. You can't make them happy. That's their job. That's not your job. Your sole job is to make you happy and do what you want. So the question is, do you really want to be a CISO? If you really want to be a CISO, then I can help you. If you really don't, but you're confused, I'll still help you. But I'll just warn you, we might only have a few coaching sessions because once I get you back on, we might not need six months, right? Sometimes I'll fix people in a, a session or two. But the reality is, spend some time this week going deep and just ask yourself, how are you doing? And then step back, what do you really want in your career? If money was no object, parents were no object, peer pressure was no object, and you were the only one that mattered. You made yourself a priority. You're the only one that matters. What is it that you really want? Because once you get that conviction of what you really want, then the question is, and it's not really a question anymore, is you're willing to do what it takes. It, you're willing, when you know what you really want and you have that conviction that this is what you want, and you will do anything to make it happen, guess what? You will always do what it takes. So final little trick. If there's something you think you wanted in your life and it's not happening, it means you don't really want it. Because if you really wanted it, you would have done what it takes. So you need to readjust and go, okay, I clearly don't want this. What do I really want? It might be a tweak. It might be a major paradigm shift. But if you have something that you said you wanted for months upon months and it's not happening, you need to do a deep dive, my friend, because the reality is if you're not doing what it takes, you're not clear enough 
on what you really want. Hope you have an amazing week. And remember, I see you, I love you, and you matter.